Hello! A few weeks ago, my latest Chessable Course 1 D4 Simplified was published. So, in this video, I would like to give you a glimpse of what the course is about, how it's been worked on, and perhaps to get you interested in exploring it in a bit more depth. As the title suggests, it's a full course based on 1D4 for white, covering basically all black's defenses against that first move. In this video, I decided to give you a well, sort of an overview and a an sample from the chapter on the Queen's Gambit declined. By doing so, I will also explain how I came to my decisions for the selected lines and give you also a bit uh, broader explanation of white's play as suggested in the video. Uh, for those interested, you will find the links about the course in the description of this video. So after the moves d4, d5, c4, e6, we have the queen's gambit declined on the board. One of the most uh, solid openings that black can choose against one d4. And in this position comes the first subtlety. Usually when white wants to play the queen's gambit declined, he plays the move knight c3. But modern theory uh, evolves and changes in many unexpected ways. And uh, well, it turns out that if white wants to play the, the exchange variation, which is the recommended choice uh, in the repertoire, uh, a brief note, I decided to go for the exchange variation because it's by far the most practical choice for white against the queen's gambit declined. So if white wants to go for the exchange, then knight c3 allows extra options for black that he can avoid by actually taking on d5 instead of playing knight c3. So what are these extra choices? Well, two of them are actually quite annoying and not so easy to deal with. So after knight c3, then the move knight f6. And after cd takes d5, going for the exchange variation, black here has the alternative capture knight takes d5. Transposing the, uh, uh, transforming the position to the Tarash, semi-Tarash variation after e4, knight takes e3, b takes e3, and c5. And this was actually made quite popular by Kramnik. He reintroduced the semi-Tarash defense in 2013 at the London Candidates, and ever since then, it is a very solid choice for black. So if black wants to avoid the exchange variation after knight c3, knight f6, he can successfully do so by taking on d5 with the knight. So this is one major option that uh, we would like to avoid. And the second one is a sharper one. Um, in After knight c3, if black plays c5, the Tarash defense, but after c takes d5, now instead of ed5, which we can't really avoid, and this is also examined in the course, but the, the line we can avoid is the Shara Henning uh, gambit after c takes d4. Usually white gives a check on a4, giving check and attacking the pawn on d4, and after bishop d7 he takes the pawn or queen takes d4, but after ed5, uh, whichever way white takes on d5, uh, modern uh, engines have found that uh, black has quite good compensation for the pawn, in view of uh, his very active piece play. His pieces are really coming out very quickly. Knight f6, knight c6. Yeah, bishops are coming, queen is coming, bishop is coming, whatever. Yeah, e7 before. It's a complex line to navigate for white because um, black definitely has the initiative and white, even though he's solid and a pawn up, still needs to defend for some time. So why allow these two choices if we can avoid them, right? And we do avoid them by actually taking on d5 one move earlier before going knight c3. Now, none of, neither of these two choices are possible, so we successfully enter the exchange variation after e takes d5 and knight c3. So this is the starting point of the exchange variation. A lot of moves are considered in the course. The Taraj variation that I mentioned with c5 being one of them, now moves like c6, bishop e7, bishop b4, even the sidelines, well, not exactly sidelines, they became popular lately, moves like a6 and h6. So everything is covered. But in this video, as I said, I will concentrate on uh, 
first describing the possible plans why it has in the Carlsbad structure and second uh, I will uh, show you this uh, novel uh, and to my mind surprising plan that uh, Alpha Zero introduced in uh, its match with Stockfish in 2018. So uh, for starters to just go into the into these games I will take the move order Knight F6 and now Bishop G5 even though uh, in the course I actually recommend the development of the bishop to f4 rather than to g5. So against all the lines, and this is a quite a compact feature of the course, that the, against all the lines the bishop goes to f4 uh, in the queen's gambit decline. But this doesn't really affect the uh, uh, applicability of alpha, alpha zero's plan because you will see later on that this, this bishop, uh, the squared bishop, can be exchanged either for a bishop Black's dark squared bishop or a knight, and the plan is still applicable for white. So the move orders do not matter so much. So as I said, we, we take bishop g5 here just in order to get to uh, the games. Now c6, and after c6 we have already the so-called Karlsbad structure. So it, it's characterized by these uh, pawns a7, b7, c6, d5 for black, uh, and uh, f7 g7 h7 three pawns on the king side and white has a2 b2 on the queen side and then a more compact central mass d4 and then e pawns a f g and h pawns in the center and on the king side now before continuing i would like to give you uh, an overview of uh, white's plans in the Carlsbad structure now most of these plans have been known for decades uh, but the, uh, uh, the latest one, uh, the, let's say the sixth plan, is actually the Alpha Zero plan that we are going to explore in this video. So these plans, known for decades, are first and foremost the minority attack, and that is uh, by uh, that happens after White plays B4. Obviously, that pawn is supported, most likely with a rook, so that doesn't hang. And after B5, White wants to push B5, take on C6. And then force black to take with a pawn, b takes c6, when that pawn on c6 would be weak backward pawn with a weak square in front of it. Or in case of capture with a piece, let's say with a knight or a bishop, then that pawn on d5 would be isolated. So this is the uh, minority attack when uh, in either of these cases white will start play on the queen side targeting those weaknesses either on c6, c5 or the pawn on d5. Then we have the second plan, which is the, I call it at least, uh, and it's also I think known as the Botvinnik plan. And that consists of building a full pawn center after e3, most likely bishop d3, and then f3 and e4. So this is the, uh, the central uh, plan for white in the Karlsbad structure. It became pop known since uh, the classical game Botvinnik Keres from 1952 uh, and uh, I recommend you take a look at that game because it's really a, a model game how white wants to execute this uh, central expansion with f3 and e4 and Botwinnik won in a very convincing style ever since then that plan is uh, popular and one of the main ones for white in the Carlsbad a sort of a alternative to Botwinnik's plan is, is that after f3 uh, white can play g4, not e4, but g4 to expand uh, on the king side. Later, maybe h4, and then start pushing the pawns on the king side. This is a let's say a small uh, variation of Botvinnik's plan, which in includes the move f3. Then we have a plan of pushing e4 in the center without the help of f3. That is a plan which uh, aims to open the center quickly and usually is applied when white has a lead in development. Then we have the plan of for white of castling long and then attacking on the king side, most likely in combination with uh, Botvinnik's idea of f3, g4, h4 and so on. Then we have another plan and that is Pillsbury's plan named after the great Ameri American genius Harry Nelson Pillsbury who in in invented this plan of putting the knight on e5 after knight f3, knight e5, 
supporting that knight with f4, and then using it as a focal point of an attack for an attack on the king side. No, mostly bishop d3, attacking h7, maybe rook f3, rook h3, or g4, g5, and so on, attacking on the king side. And all these plans have been known for a very long time. And now comes the sixth plan, which is Alpha Zero's plan. Uh, and that plan is involves attack on the king side with short castling, like Pillsbury in a way, yeah, like Pillsbury's plan, but without planting a knight on e5, and instead allowing the doubling of the pawns on f3. So white develops the knight on f3, allows the pin bishop g4, and then allows bishop takes f3, g takes f3, to open the g file. And this is the plan we are going to explore how, how it works yeah, in this video. So let's make some moves to get to that position. So e3, bishop d6. I'm not going to go into the details here about the opening moves. Here, for example, black most commonly develops the bishop on e7. But like I said, moves are not that important. What is important is the plan and the, its implementation. So bishop d6, bishop d3. This is the ideal spot for the bishop, for the light squared bishop for white in the Kalsabad structure. Short castle and now knight f3. Here we see it. In Bot Phoenix plan, for example, the knight usually goes to e2 to allow for f3. But alpha 0 develops the knight to f3. Rook e8, short castle, bishop g4. Here we have the pin. And now comes the amazing concept, queen b3. So not only attacking that pawn on b7, but getting away from the pin. And I can assure you this is not the first move you... you uh, consider when you uh, when you see bishop g4 because we have this very strongly ingrained uh, chess education in our, in our minds that we want to avoid this doubling and of the pawns on the king side and weakening our own king. However, what alpha zero I could say understood, but maybe it's more precise to say for so is that it can actually after g takes f3 use the g file to attack black's king and that is not in fact a weakening of its own king we will see what this means knight a6 now developing the knight and for example the queen b7 knight b4 is an idea so rook f e1 the rook is useful to support the e4 push and here it's it's um, it's tempting because the knight is pinned so after taking on e4 knight takes e4 there would be a double attack and some pressure in the center and now Finally, Stockfish decides to take on f3, and after gf3, we have the starting position of alpha zero's plan. So this is the position that White was aiming for, and here, what is really uh, uh, kind of pr promising for White is that the setup and the next moves are automatic, really. And the moves that alpha zero plays, and this plan happened in two games in, in that match uh, against Stockfish, Alpha Zero played exactly the same moves. And these moves are the following. The king comes to h1. The move orders may differ, yeah, but the, the moves that will definitely happen are the following. King goes h2, to h1. Rook comes to g1. So occupying the, the g file. And then the queen from b3, which is obviously not participating in any attack whatsoever, is transferred to the king side after queen d1, f4. Queen f3 and queen h3. And from h3, the queen is very actively participating in an attack on the king side. Later on, the rooks will be doubled on the g file. And the beauty of it is that black cannot do anything about it. And white will automatically execute all these moves and obtain very promising attack. So now I will show you from this position, the, the, game, the games diverge. And I will show you two, the two games that... Uh, so alpha zero emerge victorious after implementing this plan. So one game here continued with knight c7. And I'll just follow the moves, how automatic they are. King h1, g6, f4. Liberating the path for the queen. Queen d1, queen f3, queen h3. Rook b8, rook g1. The rook comes to the g file. Knight e6, attacking the bishop. Bishop drops back to h4. Bishop e7, and now after bishop e7, there are maybe some threats like knight e4 attacking that 
bishop on uh, h4 and threatening maybe the knight f2 check if black takes on if white takes on e7 so now white takes on f6 and the uh, interesting point about these two games is that in in both of them the bishop blacks uh, sorry white's light dark squared bishop is exchanged for a different piece in this game we see it exchanged for a knight and in the next game we will see it exchanged for blacks um, dark squared bishop so it's a good uh, variation on the team you could say and then you can see how the attack actually works in a different piece constellation here we have black being left with a dark squared bishop so bishop takes f6 f5 attacking the knight uh, knight g7 and now queen d1 the queen goes to h3 and notice that white is not in a hurry actually to take on g6 and keeps this tension because the pawn on f5 is limiting uh, uh, black because it takes away the e6 square bishop h4 attacking the pawn on f2 queen f3 defending queen f6 yeah, and now rook g4 now the bishop with the queen on f6 the bishop on h4 is short of square so ideas like queen h3 can happen yeah h5 getting rid of the rook but weakening the g6 uh, square somewhat but it's a very deep concept by alpha zero we will see as it foresees that it wants to sacrifice this pawn on f5 and then use the second f pawn it's actually quite a it will actually be a quite a interesting use of the doubled pawns to then advance with it further with f4 so rook g2 the rook was attacked king f8 getting away from the g file rook ag1 following the 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 plan knight takes f5 so this is the pawn sacrifice and queen h3 so now by sacrificing a pawn white extended the activity of the light squared bishop so now the threat is take on f5 as queen f5 is not possible because the bishop on h4 is hanging and gf5 probably allows some penetration along the g file so the black removes the knight knight e7 and now f4 now the second pawn is coming rook bd8 and now in this position comes the uh, fantastic uh, another fantastic concept by alpha zero and uh, it's it's curious when you when you know a little bit of chess and you know uh, some concepts and um, it's funny to 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 follow that these concepts are also uh, obeyed you could say by the engines and the concept we see here in play is the concept of the worst piece so if you look at white's position all the pieces the bishop the rooks the queen are in a more or less optimal uh, on optimal squares but the knight is not really participating in the attack and if you look what would be the best square for the knight ideally you would like ma magically like it to be transferred to e5 and this is actually what alpha zero does knight b1 amazing stuff the knight is simply coming to d2 f3 hitting the bishop along the way and then getting to e5 um, a few more moves to show you from this game rook d6 knight d2 knight g8 so stockfish is defending by targeting the pawn on e3 now knight f3 is not possible because the pawn is attacked so rook e2 first defending the pawn queen e7 knight f3 and the knight is almost there after bishop f6 f5 white's attack is crashing through so we can stop the game here because it's uh, it shows the the efficacy of the plan in its entirety we see how powerful and also straightforward and simple white's play was in uh, uh, in the uh, by following yeah the the plan that was possible after the doubling of the pawns on f3 now let's go back to the position after g takes f3 yeah and check the next game so rook b8 was played in that game queen d1 again we know the drill f4 queen f3 queen h3 knight c7 f4 bishop e7 queen f3 knight d7 and now we see the difference now in this game the dark squared bishops are exchanged in the previous one we had a bishop for a knight exchange here we have a bishop for a bishop bishop takes e7 
Rook takes e7, Queen h3, threatening mate on h7, Knight f6, and King h1. So you see, all automatic is the same again. Rooks are coming to the g file. Queen d7, obviously, uh, White will avoid exchange of queens because it's playing for an attack. Bishop f5 with a tempo. Queen d6, Rook g1, King h8, Bishop d3, Rook g8. Queen h4, slowly building up, knight c e8, rook g5, h6, and rook a g1. So again, we see here total domination for white on the king side. The plan is executed, yeah? All the moves from the plan have been um, played on the board. And we see how with these simple means, white uh, has obtained really a, uh, an overwhelming uh, position on the king side. It also has to be noted that black is extremely solid. So all the pieces black has are defending the, the king side. So it's not easy, far from it, to break through. And in fact, in order to break through, Alpha Zero in this game had to combine play on both sides of the board. We will see that a bit later on. Um, White will expand on the, king, on the queen side to grab some space there. And then combining that expansion with the play in the center, ideally like f3, e4 is the main idea for um, white in this position. It eventually managed to uh, break through black's defenses and win the game in the end game. So to show you a few more moves, yeah, rook c7. Black's problem is that there is no active counterplay and it can only wait. So a3 covering b4 and preparing b4 later on. Queen e6, rook e5, queen d6, and knight e2. Yeah. So now we see another knight maneuver. In the previous game, we saw knight b1, knight d2, knight f3 with the idea of knight e5. Here we see knight e2 with the idea of knight g3 and knight f5. Knight h7, knight g3, queen f6, offering exchange of queens. Queen h3 and knight d6. It's a very nice defense by Stockfish. Now the knight on d6 is covering the f5 square, preventing knight f5, or at least exchanging uh, one pair of knights and now f3 this is the now that knight f5 is not uh, or at least leads to a uh, exchange of knights white intends to further advance by pushing e4 but this needs to be uh, prepared carefully it's very important to note the very strong outpost for the rook on e5 which makes the e3 pawn safe now with the rook on e5 that pawn cannot really be attacked a6 now by black a4 this is the expansion i was talking about white wants to go a5 b4 to completely lock in and clamp down black's queen side and then with that total domination on the queen side it will turn the attention to the center so after a4 queen d8 now rook h5 now with the, without a queen on f6 there is no attack on the pawn on f4 so the rook is removed from e5, creating the threat of e4, e5, attacking the knight. Yeah. So the queen comes back to attack the pawn on f4 and stop e4. Now a5. So see how uh, white is combining play on both wings. This is what you would expect uh, in games of old masters, you know, when they would be combining these threats on both wings and uh, playing on domination and so on. And it's really... Uh, interesting to see that uh, the best uh, engines in the world are actually uh, copying this uh, this strategy of uh, of humans that have been known for ages. The only difference is that the execution of these strategies is understandably uh, much better uh, with the engines than with the humans. So rook e7 attacking the pawn on e3, rook e5 going back rook c7 and now b3 now another uh, talking of comparisons why not b4 well no reason but uh, uh, b4 was possible but b3 is just another typical move that you would expect a human would play so everything is under control let's take our time yeah and some may even resemble some petrosians uh, games and moves yeah and after rook c8 bishop b1 again maneuvering Rook c f8, b4 finally establishing the grip. Queen d8. Now we know what 
we can do rook h5 there is no attack on f4 rook h5 the threat is e4 e5 queen comes back and now another interesting regrouping rook h4 so white defends the pawn on f4 from the side now and intends e4 now now another interesting uh, uh, prophylaxis by stockfish rook d8 and the idea that now e4 is not possible yeah, because after taking, let's say, on e4, f takes e4, there is queen d4. Yeah, so it's not yet ready. But knight h5 is actually showing the uh, uh, overburdened queen. From f6, it was the ideal square, targeting both pawns on d4 and f4. But now once the queen is um, has to move, white is ready to push e4. Queen e6 now, and now we uh, earlier we saw that white was avoiding the exchange of queens in order to play for an attack, but here it's already very concrete, and the point is that after queen takes e6, uh, f takes e6, rook h g4, white is actually winning material. The problem is that g7 and e6 cannot be defended. So first of all, g7 is attacked three times, and after knight e8. Yeah, there is bishop takes h7, king h7, and rook g6, and the pawn on uh, e6 is either lost, or in case of defending it, for example, with something like rook d6, just look at the complete domination that white has. The king can only go to h7, h8 to defend g7. So all these three pieces are the rook king, the rook, and the knight are tied down to the defense of the pawn on g7. The rook on d6 cannot move because the pawn on e6 must be defended. And what white does is something like rook 1 g4, liberating the path for the king, and the king is coming to d3, and then e4, e5, and the pawn on e6 will eventually fall. So amazing play on domination by alpha 0. In the game, Stockfish decided to, go to give up the pawn with rook d7, but after rook e6, with a clear pawn up, Alpha Zero eventually won the game without too many problems, even though the conversion uh, took some time. So these were the, the two games that I wanted to show you, and uh, I hope you found them as impressive as I did. Uh, I have to give credit to Matthew Sadler uh, and um, his uh, books on uh, Alpha Zero, Game Changer, most importantly, where it was uh, uh, the source where I discovered these games and these concepts by Alpha Zero. So give credit where credit is due. So this plan also consists, uh, it forms part of, uh, like I said, my 1D4 simplified course. As I said in the beginning, it's a, it's a full course, complete course on White's uh, 1D4 move uh, all the basic main openings for black are covered and as i said okay this video was intended to give you an idea of the uh, type of work i have done for that course so uh, thanks for watching this video uh, subscribe like it comment on it uh, check also the uh, video description where you can see the links for the course and also my Substack, social media, and so on. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video pretty soon. Take care.